everyone, how you doing? I hope you're all doing really, really well. I'm Lindsay, your host for the Heavy Metal Journal, and I'm also a writer for thisdayinmetal.com. And I'm back with yet another New Metal Monday where I talk about my favourite new releases of the week. Not only do I have three, not only do I have four, I have seven brand new albums that I want to talk about this week. So it's a massive week. I think this is the biggest week on this channel so far this year but before I begin talking about these albums which I will run through as quickly as possible otherwise we're going to be here all night check out the description box below where you'll find the Spotify playlist which will feature every single album that I talk about on my New Metal Monday videos unless it's a Bandcamp only release but I will get that noted so if you use Spotify make sure to follow that playlist down below. If you don't use Spotify, don't worry about it because I will also link the band's Bandcamp pages and their YouTube pages as well, just so you guys can find the music that I'm talking about as easily as possible. Now, the first four albums that I'm going to be talking about in today's video, I wrote full-length reviews on thisdayinmetal.com, so if you want to read those reviews for these four upcoming albums in a lot more detail than in today's video, check out the description box below and you'll find the link to the website there so you can find all of my album reviews, interviews, breaking news articles and special features written both by myself and the This Day in Metal team. So make sure to check that out below. But like I said, I have seven brand new albums that I want to talk about. So let's just jump straight in. Okay, so first up on my list, I have Accept with Humanoid, and it's the 17th studio album from the German legendary classic heavy metal band. Now, this is straight up riff fueled heavy metal at its absolute finest. Now, despite the album artwork and the title of the album, this one isn't a concept record as such. There are a lot of lyrical themes surrounding the use of technology and how we've become so reliant on it to the point where it's slowly stripping away at our individuality as human beings. But it also deals with raw emotions and characteristics and frailties that make us human as well. So if you like your straight up classic heavy metal full of really muscular riffs and soaring solos, you're definitely going to want to get onto this one. Now this is no frills, all thrills, straight up heavy metal and sometimes it's just straightforward riffage that's needed but it's not boring in any way and they have a lot of really cool elements throughout the record as well. For example, in the opening track, Diving Into Sin, they start off with this really cool Middle Eastern kind of vibe that really grabs your attention from the very beginning of the record. A personal favourite of mine is also Frankenstein, which is the band's adaptation of the classic Frankenstein's monster story, and it's very dark and very twisted, but there's something really, really catchy about that track as well. Brilliantly rhythmical drums, frantic riffage, heavy bass lines, and there's screaming solos everywhere in this record. This was an absolute joy to listen to, so if you are a fan of the likes of Saxon, Dio, Wasp, Judas Priest, that kind of vibe, definitely get on to this one. I really enjoyed this record. Okay, so next up on my list I have yet another legacy band, and that's Dark Throne with It Beckons Us All, and it's the 21st album from the Norwegian black metal legends. 21 albums in a discography is so impressive and this record does not let that legacy down at all. In fact the cool thing about this record is even though it has that black metal foundation because Dark Throne are a black metal band, they also push the boundaries of extreme metal and they take various different elements from the likes of death metal, a bit of thrash metal, new wave of British heavy metal and there's a lot of really cool Black Sabbath style doom elements in there as well, so it really is a multi-layered record. But regardless of the various different elements, it is so hard, it is so atmospheric, and it just hooks your attention right from the very beginning. There's a great combination of really harsh, rasping vocals, but clean vocals do make their appearance throughout the record as well. Lots of really cool layered guitars in this. The solos are absolutely outstanding. But the thing that really stood out to me the most about this record was the very, very last track, which is a sprawling 10 minute long soundscape that has all of these various elements in it. 
lots of really moody rhythm and old school heavy metal riffs and melodies to it as well and just when you think it's going to stop and it starts to fade out it kicks into gear again for another solid three minutes before it actually ends this is an absolutely fantastic record again i did write a review for this on thisdainmetal.com which you'll find in the description box below so if you are a fan of the likes of immortal Bathory, emperor dark funeral definitely get onto this one. I was so excited when this album was announced not too long ago and I was not disappointed about this at all. So definitely get on this one if you haven't checked it out already. Okay so next up on my list I have Deicide with Banished by All and it's the 13th studio album from the legendary death metal band. Now this record is everything that you would expect from Deicide and they have stuck to their tried and tested formula of blasphemous chuggy death metal. It's full of ferocious attitude, blistering blast beats, demonically rasping vocals, flying solos everywhere that are really intricate and in your face and just brutal, frantic riffage and it just keeps going from beginning to end. Now I wouldn't say this is the best album that they've ever done, however it is decent and it was really enjoyable for me to listen to. I I've loved Deicide for many years now and I was excited about this album but I'm going to be honest with you, the album artwork really put me off to begin with. I don't agree personally with AI generated album artwork and I'm really disappointed that Deicide have decided to go down this route for their album artwork. But let me know what you guys think. I mean, the whole AI album artwork thing has been discussed extensively online. So you guys who have subscribed to my channel or newcomers that are coming to the channel, what do you think of AI generated album artwork? Now, I when it comes to AI generated album artwork, I am personally against it. I don't like it. I would rather that that kind of artwork is left to flesh and blood human beings, actual artists that have spent years upon years honing their skills and practicing, maintaining their originality and their creative freedom, not to mention their livelihoods as well. To go to AI where it's clearly blurred over in parts and some details are missing or they're off center, I personally don't like it myself. So I'm just putting my humble opinion out to the land of the internet, which is dangerous, but let's open up the discussion anyway. Whereabouts do you lie on the AI artwork debate? Are you for or against it? Let me know why. I'd really like to hear your opinions on it. But yes, Deicide, if you are a fan of them, Morbid Angel, Immolation, Obituary, definitely get onto this one. Don't let the album artwork and my rants about AI generated artwork put you off this album because it was actually really quite enjoyable. Okay, so next up on my list, I have this ending with Crowned in Blood, and it's the fifth studio album from the Swedish melodic death metal band. Now, even though this is a melodic death metal band, they too also take various elements from black metal, symphonic metal, and a little bit of progressive metal. This is a really cool album and I have not stopped listening to it throughout the entire weekend. It's a very dynamic record which is full of aggressive guttural vocals, shredding guitars, flying solos, frantic riffage, the blast beats in this are thunderous, but you've also got the really cool synths, the orchestration and the other little sound effect elements throughout it as well, which, which really keeps it very atmospheric. There's spoken word moments, there's choirs, there's piano, acoustics, really ethereal monastic vocalizations. It really is a work of art and it's so addictive. So if you like your melodic death metal with a lot of black metal elements and progressive elements, synths, orchestrations, chants, spoken words, all that ethereal haunty stuff that I always talk about on this channel, this one is definitely for you. Especially if you're a fan of the likes of at the Gates, Amon Amarth, Night Rage, Necrophobic, these kind of bands definitely got onto that one. This is an absolutely beautiful record. So just to clarify, those four albums that I've just spoken about, I've written full reviews, breaking down each album track by track in a lot more detail on the This Day in Metal website, and you'll find that in the description box below. However, the next three albums that I'm going to talk about, I have not written reviews for at all. So the first album that I'm going to talk about now is Tombstoner with Rot Stink Rip, and it's the second studio album from the old school death metal band with a wee bit of grindcore, wee bit of hardcore, and brutal slam in there as well. This completely 
annihilates and it does not stop from beginning to end the first second to the last second this is just gonna rip your face clean off frantic chugging stompy stomps the riffage in this is just non-stop really heavy bass lines deafening blast beats that just keep pummeling you into submission and really deep growling harsh vocals the solos in this are insanely intricate and the blast beats are insane the blast beats really stood out for me throughout this entire record and they, they just keep going and they keep going and they keep going and they just don't stop there it's just an absolute machine when it comes to the drums in this now despite how brutally heavy this is and i can't emphasize that enough this is brutally heavy there's a lot of really cool groove elements about it as well so whilst your face is getting ripped off you it's really catchy at the same time this is really nasty lovely stuff so if you are a fan of the likes of celestial sanctuary hath wretched fate or the carnal savagery album that i recommended a few weeks ago you're definitely going to want to get onto this one but like i said it completely obliterates you straight up old school death metal that just rips your face clean off you in the best possible way okay so next up on my list i have an album that i absolutely fell in love with and that's Morgul Blade with Heavy Metal Wraiths and it's the fifth studio album from the old school blackened dungeon synth metal band. This was cool. Now, now if you are a fan of Tolkien or any kind of fantasy work, might and magic, sorcery, medieval themes, this one is definitely for you. I loved this. It is very old school heavy metal, but it has a lot of blackened elements to it, as well as a couple of doomy bits. But the thing that really stood out to me the most was the synths and the keys in this. They create this medieval kind of sound that is very sinister and it's very haunting, but it is so enticing and it literally hooks you in. The guitars are amazing in this. The riffs are so addictive. The solos are screaming everywhere, the drums are completely relentless and there's just something really magical and addictive about this record. And, and I also haven't stopped listening to this one either. I've lost count of how many times that I've listened to this particular album. Plus the album artwork is stunning. I absolutely love everything to do with Lord of the Rings, Tolkien's fantasy worlds and fantasy worlds in general, might and magic, sorcery, black magic, that kind of vibe. I loved this. It was the album artwork that attracted me to the album to begin with, but then I saw the genre and I went, that might be something I'm interested in. I was very interested in this, borderline obsessed. <laughs> I love this. So just give it a shot. Don't be put off by dungeon synth or anything like that because it's gorgeous. It's so dark. It's so twisted. It's so sinister, but it's so rousing and it just makes you want to don your battle armor and go out on an adventure hobbits aside <laughs> you know just jump on your horse and go this i loved this can you tell i absolutely loved this album get on this one it's really really cool it's so if you are a fan of any of these kind of bands that i've recommended before such as griffin wield and woe or even black braid they have the same kind of vocal style a little bit and uh, but the same kind of energy the same kind of atmosphere definitely get on to this one i loved this i don't know if you can tell but i really loved this album Okay, so last up on my list, finally, but certainly by no means least, I have Vesperian Sorrow with Awaken the Grey Light, and it's the fifth studio album from the Symphonic Black Metal Band. This album is triumphant. It's grandiose. It's opulent. It's everything you would expect from a black metal band. You have that frantic black metal shreddage, those rasping vocal styles, blistering blast beats, but you also have the dense orchestration, the heavy atmosphere, the synths, the keyboards, the monastic chants, and there's just something very rousing, opulent, and grandiose about it. So if you like your black metal with a lot of really grandiose atmosphere, theatrics, drama, you're definitely going to want to get onto this. But the thing that really stood out to me the most about this record was the vocal styles. So you have the black metal rasping screams, you have death metal growls, but you have very 
deep, smooth, clean vocals as well, which are borderline chanting. They are so powerful and so incredibly strong that just, just awaken something inside you. And it really catches you off guard when it happens, but not in a jarring way at all. It is a really nice touch to the entire record. Very dynamic, very opulent, but so heavy and so crushing at the same time. So if you like any of these kind of symphonic black metal bands that I've recommended on my channel so far, but you also like bands such as Septic Flesh, Flesh God Apocalypse, Old Man's Child, Demu Borgir, that kind of theatrical black metal sound, definitely get on to this one. Plus that album artwork is really, really cool. And that's it for this week's monumental New Metal Monday. I am not saying I've only got three free this week ever again because it came back and bit me in the ass because I had seven. So there you go. Let me know what you think of the albums that I've recommended for you this week and comment down below to let me know any of your own recommendations and I'll get them added to my list. Follow my Spotify playlist, check out the This Day in Metal website and subscribe to us so you can get direct emails with album reviews, special features and all the news from the metal world as well. Like, share and subscribe. I really do appreciate your support as always. It means the absolute world to me and I couldn't do this without you guys and your support. Thank you so much and I will see you very soon for my special 100th video. <laughs>